This is video 34 on MicroPython and LVGL9 on an ESP32. In this video, we introduce LVGL9.3 on a recently built MicroPython firmware for the ESP32. We learn how it compares to our Raspberry Pi Pico. This is a two video mini series on ESP32 LVGL MicroPython. In part one, we present the wiring, firmware, and drivers. In part two, we rebuild the MicroPython firmware and set up the LVGL code using the recently pioneered LCD bus approach. The early development of this LCD bus approach occurs on the ESD32, but it's intended to support multiple platforms. Can this, should this, be the future for all LVGL MicroPython platforms? Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments of the video. For this effort, the rig is using an ESP32 S3 N16 R8 USB board inserted into a breadboard. And we are using the standard 2.4 inch ILI 9341 display. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. We have simple goals in mind for this effort. We hope to get an ESP32 firmware built with the latest versions of LVGL and MicroPython. Secondly, we need to wire the devices, deploy the firmware, and set up the software. We need to demonstrate it working by running one of our previous uh, program examples. Finally, we want to form an impression of the differences in possible benefits. In this part one video, we follow the directions of the LV MicroPython website on GitHub and create a firmware that provides the MicroPython 1.20 banner. But a software version check informs us that we actually have MicroPython 1.24-1 and LVGL 9.3, just like our April firmware. This May firmware is purpose-built for the ESP32 S3 and 16 r 8 board. We can flash it with the ESP tool or Thony. The firmware uh, other code is at the video's GitHub site. Let's talk about the ESP32 S3's SPI devices. The chip has four serial programming devices. The SPI0 and SPI1 are special devices used internally by the chip. So, the general purpose SPI2 and SPI3 are the only ports available to us. In our software, these four pin devices are known by the ID either 1 or 2. By the way, these devices can use DMA and so are able to communicate up to 80 MHz. Please notice that the SPI2 uses pins 10, 11, 12, and 13. I present the wiring on the next two slides. Besides the four SPI pins, we need two control pins. Here I'm using pins 4 for reset and pin 7 for the data command, or DC. We let the touch controller use the same SPI pins and control it with pin 16. On this slide, the same wiring is shown, but now with a picture of the ESP32 chip. By the way, some example programs define pins on the chip for the display's power and backlight. For our demo, we just wired them straight to the three volt power pins. If you recall video 33, we have a collection of driver files that reside on the flash drive. Since these are MicroPython files, they are pretty much the same file we used on the Raspberry Pi Pico platform. The files are at the GitHub site. We update the display driver file with the SPI and control pin numbers. And remember, SPI2 means we enter one. The driver file at the GitHub site uses the pin numbers mentioned earlier. 
Our first demo is the temp humidity to display used in the last video. Since our firmware provides LVGL 9.3, we were able to change the software to use a specific font instead of the default font and to use the newer 9.3 scale commands. Also, we improved the reset button and the exception handling. This makes it easier to work with ESP32 in Thony. Finally, we fully implemented the NeoPixel feature, which you can see running in the lower right-hand corner of the camera. We will reset the program and run the keyboard program. Here we'll enter dog using the letters D, O, and G. Now I'll clear it. As a result, we've just verified that the LVGL graphics and the touch functions work exactly as we saw on the Raspberry Pi Pico. In summary, in this video, we used the Part 1 legacy built firmware. We presented the wiring of our ESP32 board to the ILI9341 display. We made minor changes to our display driver to use the fast general purpose SPI2 device. My impressions are that the display is faster because of this fast SPI2 device. The LVGL code performed the same as the Raspberry Pi Pico. And the network feature worked on this MicroPython build. However, I learned that ESP32 does not like hard resets and likes to crash. With this part one video as background, we will look at improved build and setup approach pioneered by the LCD bus. In the meantime, you have a new platform to continue to explore LVGL MicroPython solutions. Please comment and share your thoughts. I hope this video helps your LVGL MicroPython coding. Thank you for listening.